no warning signs that I'm aware of. And it was a revelation that the White House had no intention of making public. President Bush was told in August that Osama bin Laden might be planning an attack involving the hijacking. could have predicted. Nobody in our government, at least. Uh, August 6th, uh, PDG. I believe the title was bin Laden determined to attack inside the United States. 70% of family members' questions were never answered during the 9-11 Commission report. The Hamilton and Thomas Keene said they were set up to fail. I mean, I'm a member of the Commission. It's a scam. It's absolutely disgusting. The questions, Mr. President. The questions. Building 7 ablaze at the moment and apparently getting ready to collapse. Building 7. Free fall collapse. Well, no, there's number 7 coming down. The excitement and the fun that people get watching an old building being demolished and they wired very carefully for days and it's a very careful operation. Third time today. It's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed, destroyed by world-placed dynamite to knock it down. The smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull and then we watched the building collapse. Jane, what more can you tell us about the Salomon Brothers building and its collapse? Well, only really what you already know. Details are very, very sketchy. We are getting information now that one of the other buildings, Building 7 in the World Trade Center complex, is on fire and has either collapsed or is collapsing. The Pentagon. Vanishing airplane. From my close-up inspection, uh, there's no evidence of a plane having crashed anywhere near the Pentagon. The only site uh, is the actual uh, site of the building that's crashed in. And as I said, the only pieces left uh, that you can see are, are small enough that you could pick up in your hand. Uh, there are no large uh, tail sections, wing sections, uh, a fuselage, nothing like that anywhere around, which would indicate that the entire plane crashed into the side of the Pentagon. Firefighters and police describing explosions, a lot of them. Secondary explosion. We've got numerous people covered with dust from the secondary explosion. Just floor by floor, it started popping out. It was like, as if, if they had detonated. Yeah, detonated. Like they were planning yeah. to take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. Looks sort of like the building just demolished. Even if there was no secondary explosives in the building. Kind of like gunfire. You know, bang, 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 bang. And then, and then all of a sudden, three big explosions. Do you know if it was an explosion or if it was a building collapse? To me, it sounded like it. it to me, it sounded like an explosion. Chief Albert Turry told me that he tried to get his men out as quickly as he could, but he said that there was another explosion which took place, and then an hour after, there was another explosion in one of the towers here. Sibel Edmonds, FBI translator, breaking her gag order. All our intimate relationship with bin Laden and, and Taliban, we did carry very intimate relationship with these people all the way up to September 11. Bin Laden was spirited into this military hospital in Rawapendi for kidney dialysis treatment. The military had him surrounded. They were saying that Osama bin Laden had to be watched carefully and looked after. NORAD standing down. Where were the planes? on now to one of the eeriest moments amid the carnage of 9-11. A mysterious plane was seen flying right over the president's residence. The E-4Bs over New York and Washington, otherwise known as the doomsday planes. It has never been officially explained. Cell phones working at impossible altitudes. Solicitor General Ted Olson receiving phone calls that the FBI says were never made. What happened during that call? This is the only information we have on these terrorists. She was able to call him twice. How she could pull that off, we don't know, but she did. These are the questions, Mr. President. These are the questions. They go on and on. Good afternoon, Mr. President. I come to you today representing the families of the victims of September 11th, as well as millions of my fellow Americans. Hopefully by now you've had a chance to read my letter to you 20 minutes with the president, and if not, at least had its contents brought to your attention. We have questions, Mr. President, lots of questions. A lot of them are detailed in my letter, but trust me, there are hundreds of more questions. As my letter chronicles, sir, 
The 9-11 Commission itself says they were lied to, deceived, and essentially prevented from carrying out a real investigation. The people of the United States and the world demand the truth, sir. We have to continuously ask questions. That's what a patriot does. That's what a true American does. We ask questions. You, sir, have the power as well as the responsibility to initiate a truly independent congressional investigation into the events of 9-11 as well as its aftermath. We want our country back, Mr. President. Therefore, I'm not just calling on you and your team. I'm calling on each and every American citizen to wake up, stand up, and demand the truth. We're counting on you, Mr. President. Be on the right side of history. Are you now saying that they weren't asking to block an investigation? An investigation must not interfere with the ongoing efforts to prevent the next attack. Senator Tom Daschle said last week that you called him several times and urged him not to investigate the events of September 11th. Tom's wrong. He has, a, I think, in this case, a, well, let's say a misinterpretation.